Dune is an extremely influential book that is the bedrock of much modern sci-fi and fantasy. It is often overlooked by casual book readers, and I want to shine some light onto what Frank Herbert's writing is trying to tell us about humanity and its future potential. There are many themes in the book Dune, such as fate versus free will, people and nature, religion and control, heroism, the rise and fall of empires, colonization, false saviors, gender dynamics, and much more. That being said, in my opinion, none is as important as what it has to say about human potential, and I will explain why. Characters that demonstrate impressive feats of mind and body are a common place in the world of Dune. Thinking computers are outlawed, and people have filled the void that they once possessed. Mentots are people that possess extreme analytical and processing abilities, and can process vast amounts of data and make extremely reliable conclusions. Other people like the Spacing Guild navigators can get Get small glimpses into the future while on Spice, which allows them to chart complex star courses. Others such as the Bene Gesserit and Fremen can access the memories and experiences of their predecessors' lives. This ability gives the sisters a collective unconscious mind through their shared genetic memories and this is often where they draw from to give them enhanced abilities, as well plan out schemes and plots lasting thousands of years and many generations. They actively use genetic bloodline control to enhance the human species. They have been doing it for thousands of years and are trying to bring about the Kwisax Haderach. This person would be able to access both male and female ancestor memories, and their organic mental powers would be able to bridge space and time. Herbert refers to this person as the one who can be many places at once, which means they can see things in the future and in space beyond their physical senses. As well, the Bene Gesserit have intense muscular training to gain complete control over their physical body to become deadly warriors. Further, they can also control others with their voices and have the ability to overcome pretty much all physical and mental pain with their heightened mental abilities. Paul possesses many of these superhuman-like abilities, and with Spice enhancing them, it only makes people believe more that he is the Kwisax Haderach. He learns to see the future, master his body and mind. Further, he eventually gains the ability to understand what is going going on in the universe around him in a type of heightened consciousness. To begin to understand exactly what this means, let's start at the beginning. In Book 1, a young Paul is given a test by the Reverend Mother Mohayan. This is to find out if he is human or not, and he must put his hand into a box that gives him an extreme amount of pain, like his flesh is burning and being peeled off. Uh, what's in the box? If he removes his hand, he dies, but the pain is nearly unbearable. However, he is able to keep his hand in the box and is deemed to be a human. To quote a few lines from the book, Fear is the mind killer. I will face my fear. I will permit it to pass over me and through me. Where the fear has gone, there will be nothing. Only I will remain. Paul did something that only someone with a high level of consciousness would be able to do. Overcoming his biological programming and his physical pain with his mind. This is why he is deemed human. He overcame all of his animal instincts to keep his hand in the box. To understand the journey Paul is going on, we need to understand consciousness itself a bit more. It is nearly an impossible task to understand exactly what it is, but I want to try, because the more we understand about it, the better we understand what Dune is about. Consciousness, in its most basic form, is an awareness of internal and external existence. We live in a world of introspection and have a sense of selfhood. You are your own narrator and can step away and examine the inner workings of your brain's thought process. But it all starts with simple awareness. Being aware of your three-dimensional space and of time is crucial to the survival of many different animals. But many animals are just acting off of basic instinct and don't don't experience consciousness in the way that we do, and lack any type of self-awareness. However, higher-minded animals become self-aware and can recognize themselves and their place in the world. This basic awareness of oneself is the first step on the road of consciousness. Then at some point species begin to reflect not just about themselves, but about their own awareness of themselves. You become aware that you are aware, and this starts the feedback loop of self-reflecting awareness. This feedback loop begins to bleed into consciousness and creates the world 
world as we experience it. As a result of this, we gain many high-minded mental abilities. Furthermore, we can experience our mind and body as a thing to interact with and make changes as we see fit, essentially being able to reprogram our biological software. However, we as humans are still not fully conscious. Parts of our brain still acts off of pure instinct and biological triggers. Your body can react outside of your conscious mind, like times of losing your temper, reaction when scared, or having random thoughts and feelings pop into your mind. These are things that you have little or no control over. Our conscious and unconscious parts of our brain are always reacting to each other in a type of battle for control. However, Dune is a book that takes place when the human species is on the verge of spreading consciousness to the entire brain and maxing it out as it can exist in our current physical state. Spreading consciousness to all parts of their brain has given people an extreme control over all things physical and mental. Being able to do things such as predict the future, forms of mind control, conquering all fear and emotions, superhuman control of one's muscles, brains that act like supercomputers, and so on. Even more than this, Paul is set up to be the next step in human potential and evolution. He is the end result of 10,000 years of genetic breeding by the Bene Gesserit sisters. He can use his mental abilities taught by them to overcome personal stresses and pain to an almost superhuman level, and have master control over his muscles to be a super lethal warrior. He also received men-taught training as a child, and would learn greater discipline training with the Fremen. Further, growing up he was trained extensively in political and military strategy. So overall, he is set up with all the learned skills and genetic advantages to take humans to the next level. And with the help of Spice, Paul transforms into the Kwisax Haderach, and is eventually able to see what is called the Now which means he is able to see the future and also see things far beyond his physical body, even being able to reach his mind up into outer space and observe the spaceships above. What Paul is doing is expanding his consciousness beyond his physical body in time and space. Humans will continue to advance more and more, but even with Paul's advanced abilities, he still can't stop the violent jihad that he sees in the future. Humans still have a tendency towards violence, and even on the verge of becoming godlike, they must face their violent nature. This is Frank Herbert's message. We have endless potential, but we must never forget that we are still imperfect humans, and the battle to overcome our more primitive and undesirable qualities will never end. But please let me know what you think about this topic. Thank you very much and have a wonderful day.